Hello there, you beautiful people. My name is Willow, and welcome back to Supreme Commander of Forged Alliance Forever, where today we're going to be casting another series from the Dark Heart Tourney I hosted, otherwise known as the Darkest Heart Tourney. So, up in the top, we have the team Hot Chocolate Tears, and in the bottom, we have the team The Faf Noobs. These are not, of course, played on the Dark Heart, only the finals were really played, so it doesn't really make much sense, but hey, it's still going in the title. Let's go ahead and get into introducing our players. This time, this time I'm just abandoning the scoreboard. I will read it out each time, um, and I'll just remember it, and I'll say it at the beginning of each match. So, up here in the top right, we have a green UEF by the name of Yadel. And then we have a another green player by the name of Aaron, who is an Aeon. And then down to the south, we have ourselves a red Seraphim by the name of, I'm going to call him Chick2001 because he just left out the eye and I don't care. And then we have a red Cybran going by the name of Staw SM or Staw or Stawsum. I don't really know how you're supposed to say it. I'm going to say Staw. Either way... These are our teams, these are our players. Let's go ahead and look at the matchup. It is a little bit lopsided as the Faf noobs do have a tiny bit of an advantage in this series, having the highest rated player at 1500. Meanwhile, the highest rated player on the Hot Chocolatiers are going to be Yadel, who is a 1100. So it's a little bit unbalanced, but we did the best we could. This is round one of the entire tourney, so this round leads into another round, which is another best of three on three different maps, and then we have the finals. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and see how these players want to handle the early game. We do have an early Mantis and Mole idea of a run-by going on over here, and then we have a Mech Marine and a Snoop, a classic combination coming down to the middle area of the map, and they're going to be probably trying to get into here, deal some damage to the expanding engineers, trying to get the backwards area, the normally air player reserved spot if you're playing with three players. And then we have the calm of Aaron coming out very early to grab all of the reclaim that is on the other side of the map. And we don't really have a similar response out of Staw SM. So we might see all of this reclaim going over to Aaron of the Hot Chocolatiers. Meanwhile, the Faf Noobs are being, uh, you know, run by by a, me by a mech marine, which is always a little bit unfortunate. But you can deal with this. This engineer, if I had to guess, is going to die. This, this engineer trying trying to expand for chip 2001 not gonna quite work meanwhile we have a mantis getting into the back lines over here for Staw sm going to be killing off a mechs possibly and may even grab this little engineer over here doing manual reclaim but no instead decides to start running back might also go for the strategy of killing off this area back here but if he does, he'll run into a sore surprise of a striker and a snoop. A lot of mass being sent over to Yadel as Aaron is grabbing all of this reclaim. Probably can't afford to spend it, so decides to just throw it towards Yadel, who is currently not quite expanding as quickly and maybe in a bit of assault. No, isn't just uh, deciding to go for a very early bomber, investing a lot into that. It's not exceptionally early, but early enough to be deemed an early bomber and it is going to be heading towards the island almost it might be heading down a little bit further south and is going to try and possibly bomb some power or kill off some engineers you know you, you never know but you know let's go ahead and look at overall reclaim we can see that the hot chocolatiers are at 1.4k versus the faf noobs sitting at 354 so definitely better on the reclaim side of things for the hot chocolatiers hot chocolatiers currently also holding or nope they're pretty much on on par with the faf noobs as far as economic stuff goes they have of course that advantage of having more reclaim they've gotten a little bit more total mass this game Staw sm and aaron's comms getting very close to each other all of the reclaim over here hoovered up by aaron aaron going to be getting a decent advantage out of that honestly and we do see factory is going up for both sides. Gonna have to see how that pans out. But 
This has been a pretty quiet game. We do have a bomber over here, so these engineers may just die. Oh, these engineers are going to die. A tried expansion out of chip is going to fail, and that's going to be a factory that never completes, if I had to guess, and the transport may even go down after all of that. The transport trying to micro away from the interceptor, but is managing to... Uh, managing to mit mitigate a lot of the interceptor's potential damage, but I don't know if it's going to be able to survive. The transport doing some very fancy micro, but does go down in the end, is going to be able to drop right here, so it will be reclaimable, and that is, of course, 97 reclaim. Can't discount that. That's 80% of the cost of that transport coming right back at them. Uh, but that is unfortunate to see an unable to get that transport dropped and those engineers out in time to save his hopes of having that expansion for now. We haven't seen the hot chocolatiers go for either island yet, mainly focusing on the mainland. We don't have any other, any upgrades on any comms as of yet. We do see the comm of Stasm trying to get in close and deal damage these Aurora. We have a large wall queued by an engineer over here. It looks like Aaron is just trying to play a little bit more defensively, to be honest. We do have Yadel coming out here. Does have some strikers that are getting mowed down by th some thoms, which is very unfortunate. Uh, what, what are your orders, sir? Stand your ground. You will die with honor. Yes, stand right there. Do not move an inch or you will be charged with treason. No, no movement for you. You will never move. And yeah, with that, uh, the the strikers all die, which is uh, unfortunate for them, but um, it, it's for the greater good. Don't worry about it. This is just a Tau thing. Don't worry about it. Meanwhile, over here we do have an engineer with, uh, that looked like a tank. There's some tanks and maybe an Ordi and an engineer on that transport. So it does look like, uh, Yadel is going to be able to grab that up. Aaron and Staw SM having a little bit of a, uh, of a meeting over here. The comms just deciding, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll enjoy ourselves. Have a good, good time. Good times roll. The good times shall roll. And, uh, yeah. That's all that's really going on with these players. Meanwhile, we don't really have much going on other than just players accruing large amounts of land units. Do we have any kind of tech up on the way? I'm not seeing one if there is one. We don't I don't see any like tech to or fancy stuff going on. So yeah, that's that's about it. Do we have Tech 2 coming for you anywhere? Nope, we don't. Do we have Tech 2 on the way? And you, you do sometimes see people on Twin Rivers go for that kind of early tech play and go to try and get a uh, an advantage in that sense. Meanwhile, we do see the island up here is pretty easily going to be held by Yadel. Not going to be seeing any kind of incursion out from chip sm to stop that we do have an engineer that was dropped over here for chip uh or no for stall sm going to be able to get up that island so we're gonna have one island per team a pretty pretty balanced uh perfectly balanced as all things should be this map seemingly panning out to have both teams with one island and both teams just kind of holding the same amount of territory a little bit more territory held in the middle by the hot chocolatiers and Staw SM about to get a bomb dropped on some of his stuff, which is a little bit unfortunate. The transport over here hovering uh, with an engineer loaded on. The bomb dropping going to be trying to kill off some power. It does look like it killed off a energy storage possibly over there for Staw SM. Did kill off some kind of structure. Meanwhile, we do have Staw SM losing a little bit of the forward progression he has made. Going to be losing a land factory to the increasing amount of range pressure coming out from Aaron. Aaron using the Auroras quite well because they of course have that increased range at cost of you know movement speed but Aurora's doing quite well for themselves all of them racking up a few kills and just managing to push Staw SM off of this these two mass extractors here up at the front. Meanwhile we just have forces congregating over here for Yadel and we might see some more units going down to this ball of auroras don't want them to be too grouped up that's a that's asking for an overcharge or a really well placed arty shell 
We do have shield on the way for Aaron. Did Aaron get anything else? No, going shield without getting any either of the gun upgrades gonna be just trying to make that comm very tanky. Don't you generally see shield started up after the gun upgrades, but hey, it is still a is shield is still pretty good. Makes your comm very tanky. We do have a push now coming out from Stall SM. I don't think it'll be enough with the reinforcements fall coming up for Aaron and the fact that they were about to be very close to the comm of Aaron. I don't think this is any threat, but just probably trying to re-establish this forward operating base that he had built up beforehand. And over here, we do have gun speed and range on the way for Chip 2001. And with that, let's go ahead and check on the reclaim numbers. 5.6 thousand, so literally three times as much reclaim compared to the 1.9 thousand of the noobs so hot chocolatier is doing a lot better on reclaim and overall economically quite quite a bit ahead let's see we do have t2 out now for yadel we'll have to see if that progresses to any kind of major advantage on the ground front speed and range getting very close to done i think shield might finish a few seconds after so of course that shield upgrade probably going to finish we do have some support now out from chip 2001 going to be trying to send some units over here to help with the push coming out from Staw sm the aurora is still getting quite a bit of value as they do have that increased range over their opponents and that may be a nice little bit of aid over to Aaron is Aaron going to immediately start one of the gun upgrades is my question and I don't think Aaron can super well afford this cannot no gun upgrade but is now going to be able to use that comm quite aggressively even if you only have overcharge it's still pretty good and there is a power storage somewhere I am sure of it Yep, we have a few power storage built up. That should be near more than enough. Meanwhile, down on the southern island, we do see ourselves with some Mantis over here. Going to be getting some kills onto the factories of Aaron. There are three factories over here for Aaron. Only one ever completed for the Red Cybern player. So the Hot Chocolatiers actually win this. If you, All you'd have to do is build flares. And instead, they're building Auroras and using the factories to tank damage. This island probably going to go over to the Hot Chocolatiers very soon. We have Mongeese and Pillars and Skyboxers now coming out for Yadel. So Yadel's going to have a tech advantage on this front. Of course, gun speed and range done for chip. Aaron having that shield upgrade may throw a wrench in the plan, but Stawsim also getting speed and range on the comm. This is a full share tournament, so it is going to, of course, be full share. So if Aaron ends up dying here, it should all go over over unless the players messed up in creating the lobby Aaron is going to be able to fall back from this that shield giving an extra 8,000 HP is always going to be useful and needs to just make sure that he stays safe at this point his land forces have kind of diminished with the increased aid coming out from chip 2001 and now Aaron in a very tough position I'd like to see some of this t2 un unit production routed down to help Aaron out as Aaron's now going to be in a bad position against this increasingly large army and the two gun comms running towards them of course the gun comms cannot catch up all of the comms in the game do have the same movement speed so unless some units start slowing down Aaron which he, they are starting to do slowly this isn't going to be a good uh, a bad situation for him in, entirely. We do have a PD now built up. It's going to die very quickly to the remaining Medusa. We do have T2 now completed for Aaron, but Aaron seemingly not spending his eco very well as he's no longer producing units. Needs to get that back online very soon. Possibly was thinking about going for a straight tech 2 switch but was a little bit early on that and an inopportune timing means that now Aaron is in risk of losing so much of his base. Build the PD! Build them! We need to be safer! Aaron's comm still has the shield up, still hasn't managed to lose that shield, so we'll be able to stay alive for a nice little while. Still has a 1000 shield buffer 
on the health points. Meanwhile, at the northern end of things on the main island, we do see ourselves with a situation where Yadel is slowly going to be able to push up. Yadel has no upgrades on the comm as far as I can tell. Nope, he does not. So we are going to be able to see Yadel get some good ground covered over here. We don't have T2 just yet out from our Seraphim player chip 2001. Range on the way for Aaron, going to be trying to get the comm up to snuff with the opponent comms. Still not really producing a lot of units. We can see that Aaron is now able to spend a lot of that mass. It's going straight into the comm. Speed on the way. We'll have both of those upgrades, but there's double gun comm out over here. So you're not going to win that fight even with the shield upgrade. You do need units to turn this around. We have unit production coming back online, but it's paused as the upgrade finishes. Need to unpause that, get your units back out. Meanwhile, on the northern side of things, we can see a run by going to be killing off a couple of mass extractors and getting some good work done. We do have a lot of factories now queued up for chip, going to be spamming out a lot, but as the T number of T2 units increase, we just kind of need to see a tech up out of chip or out of our Siren player Stall SM who has teched up now and does have T2 tanks now rolling out. Those rhinos are very good. Meanwhile, the Southern Island has now claim, been claimed by the Hot Chocolatiers quite heavily. So both islands going to the Hot Chocolatiers, they are able to gain an economic advantage out of this. Let's see if their economic advantage can transition into a map control advantage i mean of course they do have map control but like in the middle they're starting to lose quite a bit due to this double gum gun com play out from the faf noobs we do have a little bit of a push starting up over here for Yadel. Wants to keep his units balled up quite nicely. Those parashields going to be tanking a lot of damage for him. We are going to see the Mongeese roll into range, fire some shots, get some damage done. It does look like now units are going to be pushing on this. Right now what you do in this situation I feel is you move the tanks, the T2 tanks up a little bit. Let them start tanking damage. Keep the Mongeese back a little bit further and have the parashields near the tanks or the Mongeese your choice to keep them alive use your t1 to just gunk up their pathing but it does look like both players are going to pull away from that fight so that is the end of that meanwhile cloaking on the way for Staw sm i can't imagine he can afford this no he can't this is not affordable by any means or like just at all just yeah that requires so much power it is cancelled cloaking could have been a very powerful upgrade but now we have a shield and com and gun com out for aaron going to be able to be start going to be able to start chewing through these units out from Staw sm and get rid of that factory quite quickly Staw sm gaining this ground with the aid of chip 2001 but not quite able to get much done we do have t2 tech now out from chip 2001 how is his economy holding up is he he is mass stalling quite badly we don't have the same mass stall quite out of Staw sm just yet aaron's economy is doing quite well it's pretty balanced and yadel has managed to balance his economy uh pretty well as well meanwhile over here we do have a t2 push out now these t2 units in this kind of number are still dangerous to this calm out from chip Chip does need to respect this. He does have a lot of land spam to use towards this, but it's just, it's always a dangerous game to bring the comm up and start fighting a T2 army. The, the comm, unless it has nano for Seraphim, is still dangerous to this army, but isn't nearly as invulnerable to it as it is to a T1 army. Meanwhile, we have a lot of Zooies and Thumbs dying over here. And this, this is just still looking quite good for Yadel. Yadel able to hold on to this. Meanwhile, on this flank, we can see the slow attritional war of Aaron using the comm to get some very good effect down is working out. We now do have T2 tech out from Aaron. Obsidians and Asylums coming out in mass to try and help with this. We do have a lot of T2 units now amassing over here for Yadel. Yadel has pulled the comm back 
to the main base has decided to play it a little bit safer with his comm than all of the other players in this game so far. We do have, T did T2 get finished for, oh no, that's just uh, T2 Engineer has moved up. We do have some T2 defenses coming up over here for Staw SM, those Cybran Cerberus turrets. Uh, not super effective against things like Obsidians when they run at it, but Aaron doesn't have a ton of Obsidians to throw at the situation. So the Hot Chocolatiers, while in a good position, kind of need to find their footing and find some way to cause damage to the Faf Noobs, while the Faf Noobs just need to start clearing up, uh, shor shoring up their defenses and keep tacking up to get to a better position in this game. Chip2001 is doing quite well for himself currently, has managed to get up a decent amount of T2 production, three factories producing T2 units is pretty good, and is going to be able to start pushing towards this T2 army pretty soon. And as overall economies go, it does still seem that the Hot Chocolatiers are ahead by a nice little bit. As Reclaim goes, it's kind of gotten a little bit closer with 8.1 thousand for the Faf Noobs and 15 thousand for the Hot Chocolatiers. And Chip2001 is now moving his comm a little bit closer, going to be taking a lot of damage on that comm down to 7.5k health. And we do see the large majority of the forces now that were built up for Chip are going to be dead. Of course, he has more production than anybody else. I don't know if he can really afford it. He can't. But having all of this production is going to mean that Chip will be able to have a lot of units fielded as soon as he gets his eco a little bit more short up. Possibly when he stops building T2PD and mass storage and the such, he'll have enough mass to afford all of these factories. And once he can, there's going to be a lot of Zooey's, a lot of Thoms, and a lot of Elshavas coming out very quickly. But then again, there's a ton of T2 production now out for Yadel, and Yadel is, I'm pretty sure, actually able to... Yes, he is. He's able to actually afford his T2 production at full clip, so he will be producing quite a few units himself of course completely out of the t1 phase so it's just a purely t2 army not as much spam to just kind of throw at the enemy but you know quality and quantity is pretty good and he has a decent mix of both we do see a army out from stall sm kind of just getting murdered we can just zoom in here and just watch the cybrans as they file in one by one for their execution uh if only uh executions and in real life were this easy, where the enemy, where the, uh, executee was just like, okay, I'm gonna walk into the firing line now, thank you. And, um, <laughs> that's going to be the end of most of the army that was out for Staw SM. Both the Faf Noobs losing large swaths of their army for relatively little out from Yadel. Yadel being exceptionally effective with his T2 army, and you just see this constant stream of T2 units just being shoved out of the base of Yadel. Yadel doing quite well for himself. Do we have any... We have T3 now on the way for Aaron. Do we have the same out from Yadel? Yadel not quite committing to T3 so early. A bunch of Obsidians now dying on the front lines near Aaron's comm. Aaron's comm getting up to 5 vet relatively soon with some overcharges and some good micro will be at 5 vet. We do have a counter fire base being built up by Yadel, and I think this is possibly a template having walls built around where the shield is, which is pretty effective if you're not going to put your own units under the shield, I guess. It does give you that option of making it a lot harder to enter the shield, so that way you can't really come in and shoot at the shield generator itself which is by far the easiest way to kill a shield. So that's a that's an interesting tactic that you don't really see all that often. And Yadel going to be falling back. Yadel not fielding as big of an... Or not Yadel, Aaron going to be falling back. Aaron not fielding quite the same level of army supply. I don't know why I'm saying army supply. This isn't StarCraft 2. Not fielding quite as big of an army as his compatriots as his peers but is being quite effective and is getting up a lot of t2 production now going to be able to produce a nice amount of units every time i say nice i'm i i don't know is it it's just the 69 meme i say nice a lot and i always like like a nice amount of units he's gonna produce exactly 69 units does anybody else feel that way i should just stop using the word nice oh man um 
we do have still a decent a decent number of units out over here from Yadel. Not not really too much to talk about. A bunch of jesters now out from Stall SM going to be absolutely butchered by the Probably there was some flak involved there and the interceptors out from Yadel. We don't quite see any teching up on the air front out of, I think, any player. No player really going to go for the T2 airplay just yet. T3 land 85% complete for Aaron and, and rising rather steadily. The, uh, the wall around the shield is being built up quite quickly. And we do have a bunch of T2 units now out over here near Stahl SM's Com and Army. The uh, These units are exceptionally tanky. Obsidians and Asylums making them even tankier. So Stahl SM, while having a gun com, isn't going to be chewing through these exceptionally quickly without a few well-placed overcharges. Uh, still not able to grab this mass extractor for some reason. Kind of forgot about it out from Aaron. Meanwhile, Yadel has, of course, grabbed all of this. Let's go ahead and check on the economies of each player. Yadel sitting at 84 mass a second. Uh, 64 for Aaron. Chip at 78 and 56 for Staw SM. As we look at reclaim numbers, 24,000 for the Hot Chocolatiers versus the Faf Noobs at 15,000. So still, overall, Reclaim has really played a big part in this game and is starting to make a huge difference. 30,000 more mass in the game is nothing to scoff at, and they've been more efficient with it as you look like the kill-to-loss ratio. Um, just overall being a little bit more efficient than their opponents, and it's starting to show as now Aaron yet again is taking the offensive and is gaining a... Decent advantage over Staw SM is able to push him back towards the main base, which is going to be unfortunate if he gets pushed all the way back because it's going to mean he's going to start losing production. I think he's in a mass stall. Yep, he is, and I believe Chip is also in a mass stall. Both of the Faf noobs not quite balancing their eco as well as Aaron and Yadel, who are balancing their ecos quite well this game. Aaron is currently throwing some shots in with the comm, is getting a quite a bit done, is the comm is getting close to 5 vet. Staw SM gonna go down to the obsidian and uh, uh, comm push out from Aaron. I didn't think the comm was going down anytime soon, I wasn't paying too much attention, but I guess the obsidians were pouring a lot of damage into that comm. Kind of caught me off guard even though I was looking right at it. And with that you can see all of this base has now been transferred over to Chip SM who probably just needs to get this production online immediately. Yeah, you need to start producing units very, very quickly if you want to survive this. We do have T3 now completed for Aaron. Aaron is now throwing Harbingers towards the front lines. Does have an engine, a T3 engineer up here. Probably wanted that way back in the back because he's had have power issues for a little while. Probably needs to get some more power on the way. We do have T2 Air also out now for Aaron. Meanwhile, Yadel also at T3 Tech having Percival's on the field, getting actually T3 faster than his uh, his ally, and that is surprising. His ally started way sooner than him. T3 Quantum Generator on the way for Yadel. We do have a bunch of PD over here that's going to be have to be chewed through for Yadel's forces, but Yadel on the aggressive now, pushing towards the main base and the comm of Chip SM, who is now on T3, does have T3 mobile artillery, the cutest mobile artillery. Oh, look at it, he's going to get up. He's going he's gonna to walk, everybody. It's going to walk. Oh, yeah, walk. Walk like you old Seraphim doggos. Um... Either way, uh, let's go ahead and see. Uh, we do have not a not a ton going on, honestly. Uh, we do, of course, have the forces out from Aedel being pushed back. And uh, all of this area being controlled by Chip. Chip going to need to start making some moves here soon. Is desperately behind on map control. I'd like to see some of these get upgraded to tech too. Or, or these. Like, you're not going to lose the island very easily. We do have tactical missile launches now out from 
Yadel over on this island. Going to be able to kill off both of these mass extractors. They're not defended against that. Also, if they have scouting, and I believe it has the range. No, it does not have the range, which is unfortunate won't quite be able to pull off the snipe onto the t3 mechs way back here a bunch of t3 mechs is built up in the back a t3 like like a lot of t3 mechs is out from chip sm who is currently uh the leader on generated eco but overall his generated eco is sl on par or slightly behind the hot chocolatiers who are also doing really well at reclaiming when you just look at this all of the reclaim on the map okay well almost all um all of the reclaim on their half of the map has just been absolutely taken and they are still pushing forward with engineers grabbing reclaim it's such an important part of the game we do have loyalists now being produced out from chip sm we have the harbingers reaching the front and it does look like we might be seeing a transition into into experimentals relatively soon um the the economies are there if these two players work together they could get up a gc very quickly meanwhile the fronts as far as just fighting with ground units has kind of just faded away on it almost we do have this tactical missile launcher getting so much value 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 stop tml please chip this is war build tmd I do. Chip is now in a... Is going to be in a power stall. He's losing power generators to tactical missile launchers. Losing mass extractors. Shield heavy. Interesting choice. Now out for Aaron. I'm going to be producing that relatively slowly. I don't think Aaron can afford that power. Why? Oh, Aaron can afford it. But Aaron's going to be building that exceptionally slowly as we can see. The comm there does not have a ton of build power, and it takes a bunch of build power to get that upgrade, but could just leave it running for a long time. Is your fridge running? I think so. Better go catch it! <laughs> Meanwhile, we have a drop of a drop of fervors into the back line for Chip SM, and he's gonna be losing more and more ground to this attritional warfare, just constantly giving him harassment, stopping him from being able to build up and do what he wants, doing these drops, doing the TMLs, causing trouble for his opponents or for your opponent always a good idea. Be annoying. Anything that you like in video games that are competitive. Anything that you find exceptionally annoying to deal with, start doing it. Because if you just start doing the annoying thing, then somebody else has to deal with it. And it kind of wears you down throughout the course of a game. As we are 28 minutes in, let's check on Reclaim again. 32,000 now for the Hot Chocolatiers. They're honestly running out of things to Reclaim that are easily within grasp. Um, and only 18,000 now out from the Faf noobs. Shield Heavy completed as a bunch of build power came over here to help. That comm super chunky now for the Aeon player known as Aaron. Going to be having 25,000 HP and shields, and after that you have to tear through 14,000 HP of health. And a 28 second regen rate and a 32 on the shield has a lot of regen, has a lot of powerful uh, tankiness. Just able to tank out quite a lot. I don't know if that was just like, okay, I'm not getting sniped at this point. Or if that was an upgrade like, okay, I just want to be able to walk my comm forward again. Meanwhile, we do have a bunch of defenses now built up at the main base of chip or the former main base of Staw SM. A lot of interceptors out of chip going to be running over here. I think they killed off some transports, but now they're going to be shot down. Transports picking up more fervor is going to be going for another fervor drop. Uh, may want to attempt to put it back here, but not sure if that would actually work. Meanwhile, we have the, uh, the indirect fire war over here as spearheads and flapjacks try and fight off with the uh mobile artillery out from chip we also of course have the occasional demolisher demolisher is not nearly as cute as the uh seraphim t3 mobile artillery but still as effective 
uh, and just this indirect fire war going on. Uh, going to be a very slow and drawn out conflict over here. The ground game has just kind of halted for both sides, neither able to make real progress against the other. We do have a lot of Percivals built up, could start seeing some aggression, but I think it's going to be slowed down for a little bit longer. Harbinger is still producing out for Aaron, building up quite a few. Let's just go ahead and check on the number of Percivals. We have 14 Percivals, and how many Harbingers do we have? We have seven Harbingers. Chip SM has some T3 stuff out, but I think it's mainly sniper bots. Three sniper bots and two uh, artilleries. The Suthanus. Suthanus. I don't know how you're supposed to say it. Uh, but the Suspect Anus, of course, as I have uh, lovingly now called it, is uh, going to be able to fire at pretty much everything, but we're not seeing any Othams, no of the, none of those T3 tanks. So in the straight up ground war, these Ilshivas are good, but the Percivals are going to get a lot more done for the cost. I think Yadel has lost a few Percivals now, only at 12, so has lost at least two, uh, and probably more as some of these Percivals are going to be newly produced ones. Meanwhile, we're not seeing any experimentals out from the Baff noobs. We do have a Soul Ripper now on the way for Chip SM, and that could be a major issue for the Hot Chocolatiers. I'd like to see both of them go for an experimental or work together on an experimental very soon. Let's see, have they scouted it though? They haven't. Scouting could be a little bit better for the Hot Chocolatiers. Wait, what did that say? I said something about a snipe. What? Down here. I, I don't know what that was. Um, Answers in the comments, please. I don't know why that said that, but okay. Uh, let's go ahead and see. I uh, build, I do. All right. We do have a lot of Percivals, but the air game is going to be difficult to deal with that. I mean, you have a ton of Interceptors, but you don't have T3 air. So if this Soul Ripper finishes, and it's well on its way to finishing 65%, we're going to need to start seeing some T3 anti-air very soon if we want to be able to deal with that Soul Ripper, which will be a massive issue. I mean, we have how many Interceptors is this? 105 Interceptors out of Yadel and Aaron sitting at 25 Versus Chip over here has ASF now, four of them, and 13 Interceptors. Oh, and 53 Interceptors. So the air control will be firmly in the hands of Chip. So this could be exceptionally dangerous. We will have to make sure we watch that Soul Ripper once it's finished. Because at this point, I'm pretty sure it finishes barring a snipe out from the Hot Chocolatiers on to Chip 2001. Meanwhile, we do have uh, T3 engineers now being produced. We do have some air production going up, but none of it's teched up. The highest tech air we have out from... Oh, we have tech 3 air now out from Aaron. This could be a major development. I'd like to see a whole bunch of emphasis placed on to getting a bunch of ASF out quickly. Where is this ASF going? It's just going to be landing right there. Okay. And we do have scouting now out from Chip. Going to be seeing where everything is. The Soul Ripper completes. In fact, let's go ahead and do my cinematic uh, look at it. Let's go ahead and just get uh, ourselves a nice look and see what this Soul Ripper do does. I feel the 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 game kind of hinges on how much this Soul Ripper can do. If this Soul Ripper does not complete its task of killing off a comm or both comms, then it's going to be a difficult situation out for Chip. He's going to be in a very bad situation, just to be completely honest about it. We have Coronas now coming in to fire at the experimental gunship. The experimental gunship going to be focusing on Aaron. That may be a mistake. Aaron will be able to tank this so much longer than the calm of Yadel 
Aaron now is currently sitting here, still 25,000 HP on the on the comm. We have Asylums coming in. Could just walk towards the Asylums to gain just more and more effective HP. We do have 55,000 HP left on the Soul Ripper. It does look like all of the Interceptors now out from the Hot Chocolatiers is going or, or dissipated. There's nothing left here to kind of just deal massive damage to the Soul Ripper. We do have Flak showing up. Uh, Aaron's health going, going down massively. Aaron's going to die. Aaron just dies. And we're going to have to see if Chip can manage to get this also over to the calm of Yadel. Is Yadel going to be able to hold off this? I, I, I'm not entirely sure. We do have some Sams now being produced. I'd like to see some possible Cougar spam now coming out. But the Soul Ripper is now going to be focusing over onto the production facilities out and the power of... Aaron, and of course that now being transferred over to Yadel. Let's go ahead and get out of this camera and just see what these players are doing. I, it's such a painful situation. We have a quantum gateway over here. That was a little bit optimistic. Yadel now throwing up a whole bunch of Sams, and this could be dangerous as Yadel, while he does have an, a, a, a commanding economy right now, he could lose a lot to this Soul Ripper. Needs to start getting out more anti-air for the moment, I'd like to, as I said, I'd like to see Cougars right now. Yeah, Cougars on the way for Yadel. We're going to need to see those be routed towards that Soul Ripper. We're going to need to see the Soul Ripper being shot down relatively soon. Meanwhile, a bunch of Percivals, or no, Bricks now pushing down the eastern flank. This entire flank is now going to collapse from the looks of it. The shield is down. All of these PD are going to slow this down maybe a tiny bit. It does look like now Yadel has a bit of an advantage and not building Othams may be a problem out for Chip. Chip does not have the ground forces to just push this back. Chip's comm has moved back quite a bit, but this is an imposing ground army. Yadel currently sitting here with 28 Percivals and counting, going to be moving up towards the main base of Chip, and that might be enough, but... It's seriously painful to see. I'd like to see the Soul Ripper have some kind of counter to it. We do have T3 air coming up as quickly as Yadel can possibly build it. But that is going to be a lot of economy falling down now for, for Yadel. Yadel still having a commanding economic lead, but it's slowly dwindling. And it's about, it's going to be even relatively soon. Is Yadel going to be able to get much reclaim, if any? Not really. 285 mass a second versus 184. A lot of reclaim now helping out Chip. So Chip has turned the tides and gotten over to a very nice situation with the... Uh, with the reclaim side of things strat bombers now coming out to try and deal with this ground push now out from yadel which is causing quite a bit of damage to the production for chip and it's honestly it's just going to be shut down the bomb the strat bombing campaign as more and more cougars show up to the scene you might need to pull the soul ripper back to be able to deal with that the soul ripper will probably be unable to kill off the calm of yadel Yadel now having a ton of anti-air. And that Soul Ripper, of course, not being at full health does not help. Meanwhile, over here, the Percival's just continuing to push in. Does Yadel know where the comm is? Possibly. I don't know if they've scouted it before. They, I mean, they haven't, but he could have also had power issues. So maybe he saw the comm a second ago and just had a power stall or such. Uh, we do see Chip SM trying to get up a second Soul Ripper and going to be falling back. Uh, behind this line of Cerberus he's trying to build, but these Percivals, the, I don't know what you can use to stop these. You you need the Soul Ripper. Like, now more than ever, you need the Soul Ripper back here immediately, because Chip is going to be in a desperate situation against these Percivals. Literally, all of these Percivals just sh get a right-click command on Chip right now. I don't know how he survives. He's standing right next to a power generator, which isn't the smartest move. Let's go ahead and see. Does he focus everything onto Chip? It might be a death... Oh, Chip, the uh, the Soul Ripper eating a few, few hits, but that's the death of Chip. And the first game goes over to the Hot Chocolatiers in a hard-fought, nearly 40-minute battle. We do see Yadel also losing a bunch of health to Bricks that was very, very close. But Yadel's going to survive. It's not going to be a draw. And with that, we do, of course, see... Game 1 going over to the Hot Chocolatiers. We'll have to see how it pans out for Game 2 in... Three, two, one.
Game two, where the teams have chosen the same colors and the only change between the games is of course the map. We're now on open palms. If we get a third match, then you know, we might see another map. Either way, the only change other than the map is this boy right here. Star SM has decided to go UEF instead of Cybern this time. But other than that, the factions are the same. The colors are the same. Let's go ahead and speed it up. Get through the early game because we got... Mm, well, on, honestly, I just don't want to watch the early game. Uh, I'll point out anything cool going on. <laughs> Engineers! Oh, look at that engineer micro. Oh, look at them. They're engineering so well. They, 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 they went to college and got their STEM field degrees. All right, let's go ahead and slow down. We do have a mech marine opener again, yet again with a snoop. That bike and mech combo. You never would expect like a like a, a bicycle, or like a motorbike and a and a mech to be friends, but they are the best of friends. Uh, just always just doing their thing. Meanwhile, we have another. We have a mech marines out here with uh with their own special little. Uh, motorcycle friend but they are instead deciding to play the uh game of let's watch this mass extractor be built um so yeah there's mech marine it could possibly get some damage done we do have a lot of flares out from aaron as well going heavily on to the idea of having early game aggression and meanwhile as we look at it i have adrenaline water and chocolate but you're against the hot chocolatiers uh, try, try hard. Time for try hard. Good luck, have fun. Mmm, chocolate. You too. You too. Good luck. Have... Stop being so nice, everybody. We need the salt. Meanwhile, over here we have a mech marine that's in prime position to cause an engineer's day to be very bad. Poor engineer. Poor engineer walking headfirst into death. Dead engineer. Re realized too late that he was going to die. Meanwhile, we have flares set up at every possible <laughs> expansion towards the north that Stall SM could take. Stall SM's calm and Aaron's calm getting vicariously close. They may start having a little bit of a cuddle war here in a second with those giant cannons strapped to each of them. Uh, let's go ahead and just see. Are we going to have a... Uh, are, are we going to snuggle up close to each other? Oh, look at that. They're going to start snuggle wugging. Having a good time. Everybody's having a good time. I'm having a good time. You having a good time? I don't know why I'm acting like comms firing shells at each other is uh, cuddling, but you know what? I've said stupider shit, and I will say stupider shit, so, uh, you know. <laughs> Life of a YouTuber. Meanwhile, Yadel over here doing Yadel things, building mass extractors. Having a good time. Everybody's having a good time. It's a good time all around. Meanwhile, the mech marine is uh, still just absolutely wreaking havoc. Gonna get another engineer kill, maybe? Maybe, maybe. If you don't get hit by those tank shells, you'll kill an engineer. Ooh, ending with three kills on that mech marine. Quite the effective assassin, to be completely honest. We have flares sitting right here, just to be a nasty surprise for anything that may show up. Uh, maybe a little bit late, as I think a radar is going to go up here soon. Going to scout out maybe one of the flares, but note that flare is just outside radar range. That is quite lucky. Meanwhile, we have a bomber out from Yadel doing bomber things. Going to be dropping bombs on stuff. It's a very American bomber. It's dropping those fire bombs. We have uh, quite the history with fire bombs, do we not? From Japan to Vietnam. We'll burn you. Uh, that's another, uh, that's another engineer dead. Yeah, it'll getting a nice, a nice amount of work done with the, uh, early bombers so far. Has been able to get good engineer kills every time he has deployed them. Meanwhile, Yadel and Chip gonna be looking at each other, firing some shots. Going to be, I guess, cuddling and snuggling, as, uh, as I put it earlier. <laughs> And we have a bunch of uh, tanks doing their thing. Just going to be walking in. Uh, Yadel not really having the same level of production as Chip, or at least not the same amount of unit congregation over here in the south. Meanwhile, it does look like Stahl SM is also doing quite well for himself. Has definitely more units on the ground. A heavy play for the plateaus up here out from Aaron. 
And Yadel going to be trying to push back against this T1 army with his Com. Going to be getting some Thom kills, which is always nice. Oh, missing that Thom. Oh, leaving two Thoms at like no health. That is uh, unfortunate. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. Meanwhile, over here, we have Aaron going to be pushing a little bit further forward. Going to be trying to steal the hydrocarbon. That's uh, hopeful at best. Uh, Aaron just trying to play very aggressively without the units to back it up, honestly. But props for the aggression. Uh, going to be using his comm to get in close now. Going to be able to kill off that, that Lobo. Poor Lobo. Oh, nope. Lobo lives. Making me a liar. Nope, never mind. The Lobo dies. Making me a liar times two. Um, meanwhile, Star SM gonna be coming over here, trying to walk towards these Auroras. Gonna be taking a decent amount of damage, but has the units behind him to back him up in case he gets into a situation where he thinks Aaron might kill him. Meanwhile, Aaron going to continue to be killing off T1 units. It does look like Star SM is closer to a rank of veterancy than, than Aaron at the moment. So, a little bit precarious for the green Aeon. Meanwhile, on this flank, we can see a large, well, not really a push, but just a large amount of units kind of trying to assert control over this area that is very close to Yadel's main base. Meanwhile, on the other side, I guess that's what Aaron was going for, but Stasim shutting it down quite a well. We do have both comms getting down into the yellow. The Aeon comm, about 2,000 HP below that of the UEF comm. But you then again have these Auroras that are going to be able to constantly pour damage into the comm as long as they don't have a disagreement with the ground. Luckily, the ground is flat around here, so there's not really many disagreements to be had. Uh, we all know that units much more, like, they're very prejudiced against hills and cliffs and rock formations but they they very much so have a healthy relationship when it comes to flat ground meanwhile yadel is uh going low on health as well and is getting pushed back an, a tiny bit uh by chip 2001 the middle being claimed up by star sm and star sm securing his flank as he grabs up this little expansion area with engineers, the calm, and a healthy amount of spam. We do have a T1 bomber out, going to be shot down by mobile anti-air by the looks of it, but is going to be able to get up, uh, get a couple of bomb passes in by, by chance, is going to get no kills and was going for the calm of Star SM, not going for the units. I don't know if that's the right play, but it is the play that was went for. Meanwhile, Aaron is going to be low on health, but this is a like yeah this is not a uh this is not a great situation to be in star sm that push forward could have been could have been dangerous honestly uh his units were quite far away but it does seem to result in no real consequence meanwhile over here we do have chip sm or chip sm uh, star sm and chip sm apparently we have the sm clan over here there's space marines um, either way, we do have Chip over here doing his darndest to stop Yadel from gaining any kind of foothold in this area. We do, of course, have a, a good amount of production out from Yadel, but I still feel it pales in comparison to the amount of factories that Chip has. Let's go ahead and just check on the factory account. We currently have... 11 factories nine of which are producing i believe one of them was, is on the cliff as well so eight factories in total really on this mainland yadel sitting at uh one two three four five aaron also quite low having a lot of air factories which may be his downfall trying to go very heavily into the airplay early seemingly hurting his ground production which of course it would as long as you don't have as many factories producing ground units but chip just absolutely spamming let's go ahead and check on the reclaim numbers chip sm sitting at 2.9k star sm sitting at 2.8k 3.2k for aaron and 2.0k for yadel so overall the baf noobs slightly ahead on economics slightly ahead on that reclaim and overall it's showing with the entirety of the uh the reclaim probably go, generally goes into your eco pretty well, and you get that reclaim, and then you're just slightly ahead on economic production. Meanwhile, over here, we do have Stasm still trying to push towards Yadel. Yadel getting speed on the, on the comm maybe wants to skip range. 
uh, but instead does go for range as well. Do we have any kind of normal... Oh, uh, you two, no wonder you are 1k ladder. Uh, that, I don't know if that was an insult or something else. Harzer99, who I'm guessing is a spectator, is trying to cheat for some reason. Meanwhile, we do have Aaron over here doing Aaron things. Got the range upgrade done as well. Going to be able to be tearing through these T1 units quite quickly and also going to be able to put some threat onto the comm of Staw SM. Needs to be careful with the comm does the red UEF. Meanwhile, Chip getting quite a little bit of inroads in, starting to threaten the main base and the production of Yadel. Could be absolutely terrifying as the Seraphim army is like, well, here we are. What do you have to say about it? Well, what? I'm knocking on the front door. Why is nobody answering? <laughs> the air factory paused for Yadel. T2 land out for both Yadel and Aaron. We don't see anything of the sort out from the faff noobs i think it may have also kind of been a mistake for these players neither of them have had a exceptionally strong ground presence so far going to t2 so quickly just basically means that you're you're slightly behind on the ground game now and you're gonna have to get the those t2 units are gonna have to dig you out of a hole that you didn't necessarily need to be in to begin with teching up a little bit early aaron does have the upgraded comm and is getting quite a bit of work done with it and up to one veterancy now Stall sm also at one veterancy about to hit two veterancy for aaron but i don't quite know if he's going to be able to hold out against this a lot of factories out oh we did have a fervor drop by the look of it and another one on the way and the main base of star sm going to be causing issues also these these <laughs> these scout or these uh, labs still out here still possibly causing trouble for the attempts to expand out from Staw SM. Staw SM is starting to lose a decent amount of economy. Losing multiple T2 mexes is never good and is... Oh, please finish it off. Please finish it off. Yes, yes, good, good. Okay, that mex is going to die. So losing all of the core mexes in the main base is Staw SM. Going for damage and range now. Shield on the way for Aaron. And a massive push out from Chip is going to be getting into the main production area out for Aaron. Aaron's going to be losing so much off the back end of this push that it looks like Stawsm might be able to just push in after this and cause massive damage. It looks like Aaron is in a tough situation. These Zooies are coming up the back and they're not the ones being shot right now. They're getting off so many artillery shots and these artillery shots do so much damage. And are going to be able to kill off these factories and these production facilities quite quickly. The T2 HQ almost dead. Down to oh, oh just over a thousand HP. Is it going to manage to survive? I'm not entirely sure. More Zooey shots coming in towards that factory. And it's going to die. So the T2 HQ, after all of that investment and the possibility of it coming online and, and producing a... Vi a viable alternative to everything going on is going to be destroyed and it just leaves you in this awkward situation you can't really produce anything other than t1 engineers now you need to get up another t2 hq as soon as possible we do have one queued but everything's paused the shield is on the way i don't think aaron can afford shield economically aaron currently about to be stalling mass or stalling power on this shield upgrade but feels he needs it and Honestly, he might. With how much work the comm is going to have to do to stop this next push, it's going to be difficult. Nano repair done for Staw SM after getting gun damage and range. Going to be able to also get healing off from those engineers, which is always a little bit nice. Uh, going to be getting up to 14,000 health relatively quickly. With nano repair, he could also technically go for shield. We'll be able to do quite a little bit with that calm the flares over here finally dying or at least two of them and we might see more going down relatively soon we do see a attempt to hold over here we got out a couple of blazes before the unfortunate demise of the t2 hq but now we're just in a situation where i don't know what aaron can do to stop this all of these units are going to be pouring into the base momentarily and causing 
just th there's no way you can hold on with this many units just getting into your production they're gonna slowly kill off these factories and as each factory dies the chance of holding goes down drastically and the numbers don't lie like seven factories versus like two the the 77 factories win uh, shield having to be cancelled after being over halfway complete is going to be very painful for Aaron to cancel that but does have to cancel it to stay alive and is now moving back towards the base of his ally Yadel. The Hot Chocolatier is in a rough position. We do have a bunch of T2 units now out from Yadel, but they're still going to be killed off by the massive amount of spam out from Chip and Chip is going to be able to start coming around here to the back and possibly even kill off some of the extra eco that Yadel's been holding on to for all this time. We do have the island, or the not the island, the the cliff face over here still held by Aaron, but that's his entire base really does not have much outside of that. Another T2 mechs is going to be going down for Aaron and these secondary production facilities that are coming up now. I don't even know if Aaron could actually afford them, probably not, but. They're not going to be long for the world either as Aaron continues to fall back towards the main base of Yadel. At this point, it kind of feels like it's snipe or bust. It doesn't seem like there's too much that the Hot Chocolatiers can do to drag themselves out of this situation. We even have the gun and nanocom coming out from Staw SM going to be able to do a decent amount of work with that as well. As Aaron continues to try and clear with clear up this possible run by over here, and we have a large fight over here between the T2 units of Yadel and the mass spam out from Chip, who is now currently sitting at how many T1 factories? Is it still just nine? No, 13 T1 factories. Also has T2 completed. Meanwhile, over here, we have T2 out for Staw SM as well. So, like, there's not even a real tech advantage here. Soon, these Tech 2 units are going to be able to get out onto the field and start causing more issue for the Hot Chocolatiers. And we see Yadel over here trying to kill off this run by, but isn't quite managing it. Going to be probably forfeiting this entire area back here there's no artillery so the t1 of pd should be able to handle this part of it but what do you do you've lost so much map control as we look at reclaim numbers we can see 21,000 for the faf noobs overall eco is 84,000 versus 73,000 mass accrued this game and as we look at the just overall eco it team the team faf noobs is literally doubling the eco economic output per second of their opponents 71 mass second on chip 45 for stall aaron at only 23 and unable to spend it really it's all going over to yadel who's at 43 plus the overflow from his ally aaron gonna be trying to build some factories over here near the main base of yadel but I just don't see how they can claw their way out of this deficit they found themselves in. We do have T2 Air on the way for Yadel. Could possibly see a snipe come in. And if a snipe comes in, then you have a much higher chance of winning this game. Of course, it doesn't get rid of your situation with production. The remaining player for either of either of these remaining players will get everything, but it does remove a set of eyes or at least a set of hands to play the game with and it also gives you the opportunity to just go for the snipe on the remaining player and see if you can win that way but it's feeling quite desperate Aaron gonna be in here going to be able to kill off one of these Elshavas with the calm is going to be able to help out with the defense quite a bit but we do see this constant pressure and these constant pushes out from chip going to be throwing units into the hot chocolatiers but he can afford to he has such an uh, economic and a production lead over his opponents right now that he can just throw units repeatedly at the hot chocolatiers try and whittle them down try and wear them down and it's not going to have too much of an effect because no matter how much he's throwing it really really he has such an economic advantage right now that it'd be hard for him to throw away more than he's making to be completely honest, currently sitting at 90 mass a second versus Yadel, his biggest opponent is at 94, but Chip also getting so much more reclaim every single second as he's claimed more territory and has more reclaim to grab. 
And also, you can't discount the uh, contribution of Staw SM down here, getting quite a big amount of work done and is now claiming the former main base of Aaron, who is currently just trying to produce some more stuff over here on this plateau over here, but isn't going to... This isn't going to be able to kill off really much of anything down here, and you're starting to see some mobile missile launchers as flapjacks come out. They could be focused over onto the structures of the cliff that are held by Aaron. And as we enter a lull, I'm going to go ahead and speed up the game. Aaron's comm does come out to try and fight off the spam before it gets into the base. We have a large amount of units out here. T2 units out from Stawsm. Let's go ahead and slow it down as it looks like Stawsm and Chip are going in for an attack yet again. A lot of reclaim going on for Yadel. Going to be able to help him get more things produced quicker. We do, of course, have a bunch of Stinger gunships now being produced. This could be the snipe he's looking for. If he can just find the comm of Chip or Staw SM. Staw SM's comm is a little bit closer. Now on a transport, surprisingly. Is that going to be sent to the island to try and take over that? We'll have to see. We have a large push now out from Chip going straight for the main base. Aaron's comm still out here defending almost a 5 vet comm. Just constantly throwing shots in to these units that are being spammed out and thrown into the base of Yadel. But now they're starting to get in range of these factories, starting to get in range of the production. We do have T3 now out, and we're trying to get out some Titans to deal with this by Yadel, and that could be an option, but T3 is also completed for Chip, and Chip can just start using some mobile artillery to deal with the base honestly did we get out even one titan no we did not we do see a whole bunch of gunships trying to clear off this entire run by on the side but the main base is starting to fall for the hot chocolatiers and it just feels a little bit doomed at this point i'm gonna go ahead and speed it up because this is just uh, painful to watch i don't want to i don't want to see i don't want to watch them suffer for any longer and I have to. Meanwhile, over here, we do see a bunch of gunships firing in to these units. It does look like Yadel has managed to struggle to grab himself air control, but you just have to produce some flak to deal with this. And I'm sure flak is now on the menu as far as Chip is concerned. And we do see these gunships coming out now. They're going to be able to deal with the units out over here for chip as of the moment we do have a flak coming online and we have some interceptors come incoming all of the gunships but one nope all of them die now we do have one gunship that was just produced that just landed but all of the gunships now dead we now have those sathonises those suspect anuses yet again in this game firing on to the base of the hot chocolatiers Meanwhile, over here, we have a whole bunch of flapjacks firing into the base that was built up by Aaron. And that's that was T2 Air on the way, trying to get out a whole bunch of specters. The comm of Staw SM was sent back to the home base. And we have a bunch of Titans now coming out onto the field, trying to deal with all of this spam. Uh, we don't have any, like, Othams or anything, so these Titans are going to be relatively effective for a while. But... Awesome's showing up will stop the Titans from being quite as effective. We could also see some sniper bots come in. But the Sathanus has managed to pull off the kill onto the HQ. And with that, it's looking like, yeah, I'm going to call it. It's pretty doomed. I'm speeding up the game even more. As a large push starts to come in towards the main base of Yadel. And we're going to go ahead and slow it down as these units file in. Just so we can see what's going on. Respect to the Hot Chocolatiers for not giving up, for not control Kang. They did fight it out to the last, not giving up at all. Aaron and... Wow. I am I don't know why, but this is super heavily taxing my machine all of a sudden. But either way, we see Yadel and Aaron in a massive fight. The screen's constantly shaking. Everything's just going crazy. And Yadel is down here in the back. It does look like Aaron is about to be killed off. Aaron is going to be going down first. 
And then Yadel is back here on fire, and Yadel is going to be next on the menu. We do have all those units dying, and Yadel probably, yeah, that was a control K out of Yadel, decides to end it there. And with that, we have the end of the first or the second game which means we're going on to game three and it's a tied up match game winner of game three goes on to round two whereas winner as whereas the loser is out of the tournament in the first round it's not double elimination this is the end of your tournament life if you lose the next round so let's go ahead and get into it in three two one <laughs> All right, game three, everybody. Whoever wins this one, we have the scores all tied up. Whoever wins this one goes on to round two to compete for being a finalist. And whoever loses is out of the tourney. We're on Fields of Isis, a classic map. And we have the players going for the exact... Oh, wait, no, Staw SM changing their faction once again, this time to Seraphim. So we have a double Seraphim team over on the left. This, of course, is the Faf Noobs. Then we have the Hot Chocolatiers still going with their Aeon UEF strategy that has worked for them in Game 1. In Game 2, it was a bit of a slaughter for the Faf Noobs. We're going to have to see if they have a better strategy uh, than they had in game one as well on this map. Open Palms was a strong showing, and we'll have to see if Yadel and Aaron of the Hot Chocolatiers can manage to get themselves back on track and get back into that slow, methodical style they were playing in the first game. Well, it is, of course, Fields of Isis. Uh, we have a lot of Reclaim, 9,000 about, all of it really here in the middle. And you want to be getting out here to the middle as soon as possible to be get, grabbing up all of this Reclaim. And we can go ahead and see that one of the comms from each team is already walking to the, towards the middle. Staw SM and Yadel both opting to go straight for the middle with their comms. Both Ye uh, Aaron and Chip are deciding to take their time, build up a little bit more with their comms before walking out. But now both of them on their way towards the center. And we'll have to see how these players go on with this. Also, if you're planning to do NG drop in the back of my base to spam factories just outside of vision radius, I do not have a radar. Noted. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, noted. Same. All right. That's, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty funny. Either way, we do have a little bit of early aggression. Wow, Yadel getting in a mech marine behind the comm of Staw SM. It's not been seen yet, but now we do have artillery firing on the mech marine. Not going to hit it. Mech marine, one of the hardest units to hit with the mobile artillery. I think the mech marine, I'm not entirely sure. I think the labs are possibly, other than the scouts, the labs are what, the fastest uh, land unit in the game that might be wrong but it feels like it would be right doesn't it um <laughs> meanwhile we do of course have the Staw sm versus yadel cuddle match uh last time we saw this it was Staw sm versus aaron but they've decided to uh, change it around and we have these players going for reclaim here in a minute we'll have to check on those reclaim numbers from each team we have Staw SM and, or no, we have Chip and Yadel, both of them being Seraphim, and Red does not make this easier. Meanwhile, we do have them meeting over here in the middle, going to be able to fire some shots at each other to get some work done. Reclaiming, of course, very important. Usually, ooh, we do see a PD attempting to be built by Aaron. I don't know if I like this call. If you go for the PD early, it's sure it can push them off, but he's going to get all of the Harbinger reclaim, and the Harbingers are kind of the most important things to reclaim here. So we will have to see if this early PD works out for Aaron. I don't believe it will, though. Chip getting a ton of reclaim very quickly out of this. He is going to be pushed off, but it's not going to be immediate. 
and is going to be contesting for all of this mass that has been dumped here into the middle of the map. We have another PD gonna be built up by Aaron. I still, as I said, not entirely sure. Meanwhile, down at the bottom, almost all of the reclaim has been sucked up by these two comms, and we are gonna be seeing the continuation of the fight going on up here. Chip in a bad spot, really, only at half HP right now. Gonna need to keep falling back. The second PD is gonna finish, but no, it's not Aaron pausing. If you're gonna go for this, you may as well fully commit. Don't pause the comm. Unpausing now, but now gonna lose a whole bunch more reclaim, and it only takes a couple pieces of artillery to kill off these PD, and this PD is going to die very quickly after being spawned, so that's going to be unfortunate for the PD of Aaron. It's gonna have to get off a few shots. It might kill off a couple of tanks, but overall, I think that is a benefit over to the Faf noobs who got over almost 5,000 reclaim versus 2.4 thousand for the Hot Chocolatiers, placing them firmly behind in this early game reclaim war. We're going to have a bunch of units coming out. We do see Staw SM trying to get aggressive with the comm. Both Yadel and Staw SM brought down to six to five to 6,000 health, respectively. And the Seraphim comm going to continue killing off some units. Is not really all that close to a rank of veterans. He could be in trouble. Yadel could just walk at this and get a kill. Of course, that would leave Aaron most likely in a situation where he has to fight for his... For fight 1v1 versus chip 2001 which may not be what they're exactly going for we do have a decent amount of reclaim now built up right here for yadel grab and yadel is immediately queuing up those reclaim orders with the comm going to be getting all of that up and that will help him out quite a little bit meanwhile we can see aaron being forced to fall back despite his early pd investment he doesn't have a lot of units on the ground only two tanks and a couple of engineers to help him out and uh, Chip is low on health, but has uh, more units and just has the ability to keep pushing over here. So it's going to be a little bit tight for the Hot Chocolatiers. Need to come up with some kind of strategy relatively soon. We do have teching up coming out for the economy of Yadel. Yadel going for a very early tech investment. We also have a tech investment out from Chip, and it looks like upgrades have been queued, but not quite started out for Staw SM. Stossum. Meanwhile, we do have a early, was that a bomber? Yeah, an early bomber. This Scorcher bomber going to be landing right here is going to be able to come out and throw a bomber to possibly into the comm or into the army. The bomber going to be pushing forward. Staw SM in a bad position now, getting a bomb dropped on him and down to 2,000 HP versus Yadel sitting at 4,800. It is very possible if Staw SM does not get his comm out of this area soon, he could be in a very tough position. No air factories out, so these bombers are kind of uncontested. Can keep dropping bombs on that comm and keep it out of the fight or can kill off a lot of this land army if he really felt like it. We also have an air factory now out from... Aaron so no air factories is going to be a bit of a hindrance over on team Faf noobs going to need to come up with some kind of solution to this meanwhile bomber setting things on fire as you do another bomb f coming out of that bomber is going to kill off a thumb Currently sitting at 5 kills and rising going to be able to keep throwing these out here we don't see any mobile anti-air coming out from Staw SM, we do see some out from Chip going to come over and shoot down the bomber that was harassing his ally. We have T2 on the way for Aaron. Aaron possibly going to go for a very early kind of fire base. Uh, Fields of Isis does kind of lend itself with all of these little choke points to having a bit of a fire base-esque play style. You can definitely defend very easily. Meanwhile, we do have many a thumbs coming through this choke point over here. Aaron's going to start building up some oblivion point defenses. And let's go ahead and check on the reclaim numbers once again. 5.3k for the Hot Chocolatiers, so they've caught up quite a bit versus seven, uh, almost 7k for the Faf noobs. Let's go ahead and check on the economies of each player. We can see Yadel sitting at 39 mass a second. 35 for Aaron, Staw SM sitting at 31, and Chip sitting at 39, so relatively even. 
uh, the reclaim the only real difference maker in this match so far as far as the economies go and it does look like we're going to have a little bit of an asynchronous situation. We do have some tanks that managed to run by and kill off some mexes out for Stall SM and those tanks, of course, coming out from Yadel. Meanwhile, we have a push out from Chip that's going to be relatively effective in killing off these two mass extractors. I don't know how much more it's really going to be able to do. A Serpentine TML coming out from the green Aeon player known as Aaron. Going to be possibly able to get some real damage done with that. We'll have to check on the range of it. It does have range to the main base. Let's go ahead and see. Do we have any TML on the way? No, I don't even see Tech 2 out yet. So we could see some mass extractors going down to this TML. Needs to defend it. Needs to get up some more PD or get up some spam to deal with this. We have T2 Air now out from Aaron, which could be dangerous. And a bunch of interceptors now being shot down for Chip. And as both of the Faf noobs get up their air production, it is a little bit late and we're going to see a lot more air now out from the Hot Chocolatiers. We do, of course, have yet another uh, T2 upgrade out for the Hot Chocolatiers. Now T2 land finishing up and did with this launch yet no it hasn't quite launched at all it is going to go down by the looks of it there is a bunch of units coming in trying to kill off this tactical missile launcher holy shit stop with the tax <laughs> star sm very unhappy with the uh, tactical missile tactics out from the hot chocolatiers it does look like this flank is starting to have some major issue with the pushes out from Chip. Chip getting some inroads, but this PD going to be able to do a lot more. May be able to sweep around here and get a bit of damage done. We do have T2 air, so we could see a gun chip come out to kind of settle up this issue. A bunch of T2 mexes have been upgraded for Aaron. And... The tactical missiles, of course, having not launched, are not going to get very much done for the Hot Chocolatiers. We have T2 on the way for the comm of Staw SM, and we probably should see some T2 upgrade out. Oh, we do have T2 land finishing up for Chip. So we're going to have T2 out of both of the Faf noobs going to be able to get up that tactical missile defense in case Aaron wants to try and rebuild that TML. But does not seem too interested in it as of late. We do have Yadel now out here pushing. Does have gun on the comm. And also, I think that's all he has. I don't see nano repair anywhere. And uh, yeah, just gun on that comm. Going to be able to get off a nice amount of damage. They're going to be killing off 38 land units and counting. Now up to 39. Could get up to 40 very quickly. Is going to just keep on killing off units. A bunch of anti-air right here. Just going to be veteran sea fodder for the comm. Is up to 2 vet now and getting a lot of health back every second. 22 a second is pretty significant here at the 12 minute mark. And it does look like Chip has been forced to fall back with the uh, addition of more Oblivion point defense out from Aaron. Aaron should probably come back out here and try and expand again. We have a large wall being built up by Chip with this 1T1 engineer. If that's allowed to complete, that's going to be quite annoying to deal with. Going to have to kill off all of this to get any kind of land aggression out. We have a bunch of gunships being produced now by the looks of it, or at least gunship production now starting. And it could be spammed out. We could see a snipe on the cards go for Chip or Staw SM. We don't know exactly what the plan with that is just yet. Chip over here going to be continuing to fall back to the base. And the engineer fails at his life's task of building the Great Wall of Isis. Does not quite manage it. And... That is about that. We do have Yadel over here going to be sitting here. Has the uh, assist command on his comm. You can see a few units trying to circle around him. And we do have the... Wait, is there an assist command on the comm? No, there isn't. What? Wh why are you all, like, perfectly spaced? That's weird. We have, of course, the T2 pillar tanks now coming online for... Yadel going to be able to be putting out quite a little bit of pressure with these T2 units if he wants to get aggressive, but it doesn't look like that's the plan as of the moment. 
We do have gunships building up, now up to three out from Aaron. Meanwhile, on the other side, we don't see any T2 air producing. We do have T2 land yet again out from Stahl SM this time. And we can see that T2 land production. We have multiple T2 land factories now out for Chip. Chip probably able to sort to sustain this pretty well. Only in a minor uh that mass stall is not too great. Needs to get a lot of reclaim, needs to get up more eco or pause some of these factories to be completely honest Staw sim sitting at a slightly more balanced eco but still in somewhat of a stall meanwhile yadel is also stalling quite poorly and aaron is pretty much also stalling in mass so we probably aren't gonna see quite as quickly teching up to tech 3 or anything like that um these players not quite on tech 3 economy yet we do see uh, mass storage going up around each of those mass extractors, making them infinitely more efficient. And um, Yadel going to be coming out here with the comm, going to be throwing some shots, you see, at the, um, at the bases of, or the units, not the bases, the units of Stahl SM, going to be possibly getting up some work, getting some work done with that. We do have a T2 engineer and a calm with t2 now out on the field for stall sm building up some oblivion point defenses oblivion point defenses or not oblivion uh these are atushala uh, uh, adushala uh, atashala i don't know atashala i don't know uh it is a uh a bunch of pd being built up by the red seraphim player Meanwhile, we do have a nice... Uh, that's not good for the gunships. Those mobile AA getting quite a bit of damage done. Going to kill off one of the gunships. Still has four or five to spare, but isn't going to be able to do very much with them as long as they're running into all that much, all that mobile AA. T1 mobile AA can deal with T2 gunships just fine. As long as you have enough numbers on them. Meanwhile, we do have a bunch more interceptors, I believe, for the red Seraphim players. We do have six for Stasim Chip sitting at 10 versus, I think Yadel is the only one with the interceptors now. 21. Okay, never mind. Air control is still technically in the hands of the Hot Chocolatiers, even if they aren't really using it. The fire base for Aaron seemingly finishing up, getting its final touches. I would like to see what the late game plan is out from the Hot Chocolatiers, and pretty much the same for Chip SM and Staw, or Staw SM and Chip 2001. I keep on messing up their names. I should just call them the Faf Noobs, but it keeps on slipping my mind. Uh, we do have a bunch of economy built up and a bunch of factories, but I don't think this spam is going to be exceptionally effective with all of these walls going up and such and the fire base here. All of this spam is going to have a little bit of trouble punching through. Um, and even down here, you can see some fire baseage going up a bunch of t2 triad point defense uh going up on this flank and we're kind of be entering that stage of the game where ground the ground game unless you're getting up to experimentals or a bunch of t3 is going to be a little bit harder to pull off you could of course go for the t3 spam uh the mobile artillery but that also comes with the territory of having to protect the T3 mobile artillery, and that could be a bit difficult with gunships out against your opponents. We don't have any kind of T2 air coming out from the Faf noobs. We just have that T1 interceptor spam. Do we have T3 air? We do have T3 air on the way for Yadel, or not Yadel, for Aaron. Aaron going to be able to get out quite a little bit with that. We have a T2 transport now out for... Aaron could it has a bunch of engineers on it could be going for that drop that was mentioned in the early game I'm pretty sure that that was a joke comment but if they open if they invite it openly I mean why wouldn't you uh gonna be sending t1 engineers if that's the case I don't understand that you have t2 engineers send the t2 ones they will be better suited for the task at hand we do of course Still have teching up happening a t3 mechs finishing up for Aaron on the other side I don't see any kind of t3 message 
going on oh we do have a t3 max coming out from chip let's go ahead and check on the reclaim numbers the hot chocolatiers at 12,000 and the faf noobs over at 16,000 meanwhile overall economy generation slightly in the lead it would seem for the hot chocolatiers as they've accrued more mass total this game and yet again we're kind of in this situation where neither neither team can really gain a significant enough advantage to just overwhelm the other for the moment i'm going to speed up the game as we don't have many f many fights going on we just have to keep an eye on what's going on we do have a little bit of a push now out to that caster curse of making you a liar every time you say something a little bit of a push out from yadel it is going to be thwarted by the massive amount of t2 pd and the decent amount of T1 spam out. We do have sensors finishing up and chrono dampener done onto the comm of Aaron. He could get T3 and go for a comm drop. That would be a quite effective play in my opinion. Just drop it in the base. Anything they send to try and stop you will kind of just be stun locked and you can just build up quite a meaty defense if you need to. Meanwhile, we do have a bunch of mobile missile launchers failing to hit t1 spam but will eventually get some successful shots it would seem the firebase from yadel is slowly building up still a lot of mass being thrown into that from what i can tell but still a relatively balanced economy aaron not quite so balanced to be completely honest and we have a large push now out from both chip and Staw SM coming down to try and break this position, but most of this army is T2 and most of the army attacking is T1, so this is going to be a tough ask out from the Seraphim units to break this, and even then they get the fall back to a bunch of T2 point defense. It's going to be quite difficult to deal with for the Seraphim players, the Faf noobs, trying to get some headway in, not quite gaining the exact goals they may have ex aspired to when they started and uh really quick one second i'm going to really quick change the graphic settings because for some reason this is somewhat chugging let's just go ahead and anti-aliasing uh let's just go ahead and do fidelity fidelity high let's do shadow to fidelity let's just turn shadows off that should help and we're going to continue yeah, that helped a little bit. As the units file in to the base, going to be able to do a nothing really against this defense out. Mongi's firing constantly into these units. I'm going to be able to get off a decent amount of damage. And uh, that's going to stop the push out from Staw, SM, and Chip out from the Faf noobs. Um, why is this not working? Control shift f1 okay there we go everything's back to good and normal everybody star sm still building up a defense going to get some t2 static artillery emplacements up it's going to be a bit hard for the base of aaron to deal with that i don't know how much range this has but i would assume yeah more than enough to fire on all of those point defense uh we would possibly want to see some scouting coming out we do have a T3 engineer coming out from somewhere, somewhere or another. Where is that T3 engineer that has that queued up? Because I'm not entirely sure about it. Is it you? Who who has this command? Who is the command to build T3? What? Is this a real command? Has this been canceled? I'm very confused. There is something with a command to build up a whole bunch of. Oh, is it you? It must be you. Okay, this dude's just coming out here, kept building up a bunch of T3 anti-air. Those flare T3 anti-air SAM launches. Meanwhile, over here we have T3 air now out from Chip, as well as T3 air out from Aaron. And Aaron building a Czar. It looks like it's somewhat abandoned, but that is a very interesting option. Could be seeing that Zara relatively soon. Looks like it was abandoned instead to start building up the T3 infrastructure and get up some more T3 mass extractors. But uh, Aaron, I think, is in a pretty horrible power and mass stall. Yeah, in a bad power stall and a 
Mastol is on the horizon. The T3 mass extractor finishes, and that's going to help with the power generation and such, but I'd like to see more focus onto the T3 power generator right here. I'm going to need to finish that off relatively quickly to fix off his power issue as of the moment. Also, probably should pause the T3 upgrade on the comm. That spins 230 power a second. Could be thrown into the production of this power generator a lot easier. And it is paused. Meanwhile, over here, we're hearing some explosions. It looks like the artillery is done and is starting to fire upon his opponent's stuff. We have another one on the way. And this artillery is going to be able to break this base very slowly as long as it keeps gathering up. The mobile missile launcher is not going to be quite so effective. Then we have T3 mobile artillery. Let's go ahead and just see... I'm 99% sure that the T3 mobile artillery is outranged. Yeah, it's outranged by the T2 mobile artillery. The T2 mobile artillery can hit them while they cannot hit back. So that is a little bit unfortunate for the T3 mobile artillery, but of course not the end of the world. Meanwhile, over here we do of course have that Czar getting worked on yet again. I'm going to be able to be built relatively quickly we can see the health going on hundreds every couple of seconds uh let's just see i don't think aaron can really uh oh aaron can't afford this needs just more build power onto the situation honestly uh and it does look like a bunch of power generators was there some kind of drop over here that caused damage or is this just a bunch of control cage going on? I think that's just a bunch of control K's going on to try and get some of that mass back and get mass storage around possible T3 mass extractors. The error experimental, the Czar, is being built up quite quickly. Let's go ahead and check on the ASF numbers out from CHIP. We have 41 interceptors. Where are your ASF? One ASF. That is not very many ASF. Uh, that is that is what I would determine to be very few ASF, to be completely honest with you. So that is a bit precarious, but then again, it is, of course, always possible to just get enough anti-air on the ground to deal with a czar. Has then this been scouted, though? It, it hasn't. I'm 99% sure that if you see a situation, if you see nothing over here and all of this hasn't been scouted that you haven't scouted the base we do have an air scout on the way but there's so much t3 mo uh aa spread out about the place that i think this czar is going to be a complete surprise as long as it keeps building at its current pace let's go ahead and check on aaron's economy spending a lot on that also yadel in a horrible mass stall what is he building that is so expensive that's a T3 power, but that doesn't seem that expensive in all honesty. I don't know where all of his mass is currently going. Is it going into T3 land production? Possibly. Uh, no, whenever the building isn't producing, it's still negative 80. A whole bunch of mass being spent somewhere. I don't exactly know where. T3 finishing up onto the comma of Aaron, and we do see... More and more scouts being sent out. This T3 air scout may be able to see the Tsar. This one may be what they need. We do have the T3 anti-air, but it fires on a smaller... Oh, he's going to see it. He just saw it. He just saw the Tsar. He knows it's in production. I don't know if he saw the health points on the Tsar. Wait, does the Tsar go away? The Tsar goes away whenever it's not being looked at. So he needs to be actively looking at what he sees. He can see it again. He can see the health points on it total. So Chip can very possibly know about this and know that he needs to start producing ASF as fast as possible. ASF now being queued up onto the factory. I don't know exactly how many you need, but I think you need like somewhere around 40 to 50 to kill off a czar in an, effect, in effective, in an effective and quick manner. And that's if the opponents have no air to assist you with that. Ye uh, Aaron, knowing that this was scouted, seemingly moving his engineers away, and that's going to mean the czar is going to be built up slower, which is, honestly, I'm not sure if that's the right call. You, you... You don't necessarily need to do this. You are going to need to start making your own ASF to try and protect the Tsar, but I don't know why the lack of commitment to building the Tsar is coming out. We are getting some T3 mass extractors, but you... 
I mean, you were stalling pretty bad, but you can still possibly build the Tsar quite quickly. The Tsar about halfway pr uh, complete, sitting at 57%. We do, of course, have the mobile artillery. Is this within range to hit those? It's right on the edge there, but can get rid of some of the stuff around those uh, static artillery pieces. So that is an option. Using the cliff face to protect his artillery gives him a slight advantage, able to fire right over that cliff face, and the enemy artillery is going to be hitting it uh, or going over, which is unfortunate for the Seraphim static artillery. There's only two over here, and the Demolisher is constantly throwing fire into these shields. We do have a lot of scouting now coming out from Yadel. Uh, Yadel not focusing on air production pretty much at all. We do have some scouts and coming out now for the air factory of Aaron. And since very little is going on, I'm going to speed it up and just see what's going to happen here in a little bit. We do have T3 land out from both the Yadel and Chip. Neither of them doing very much with their T3 land a big movement and sacrificing a bunch of T1 engineers into the production of the Tsar, trying to get it out a little bit faster. Let's go ahead and check on the ASF numbers out from Chip. We can see that he's at 19 ASF. So he is at a healthy number of ASF. They will be able to kill off the Tsar, but not quickly. Aaron building that Tsar could even go for the pancake strategy, the absolute going to crush your base uh strategy of dropping the czar directly on top of one of these bases or directly on top of one of the comms but i don't know how effective that could be we might want to see some mobile t3 anti-air being built up for uh for chip in all honesty we do see the Calm of Staw SM over here is going to be singled out. The Calm of Staw SM probably going to die here soon. Let's go ahead and look at this. I'm not entirely sure what he can do to stop this Tsar. We do have a bunch of interceptors and ASF coming in, but the Tsar is going to be on a huge amount of health, health points. Still just now breaking the shield. The Calm of Staw SM isn't quite going down. The Tsar just now dying, going to be falling onto power generators and possibly the HQ over there. I'm not quite sure if the HQ died. Did it die? No, it did not. The Tsar was just a massive mass gift. Not going to get anything done with that Tsar as of the moment. Needed the ASF to try and protect that. Chip now up to 31 ASF and is going to gladly accept that mass donation. Taking out, uh, good, nice job taking out Radar. Okay, then a massive push now out from Chip towards this fire base that's been built up by Aaron. I don't know how well this is going to work out. Sure, he is currently winning the fight, but there's Percivals and there's a bunch of triads still on the field, still able to do quite a bit of damage. And a Czar is being built up just as fast as Aaron can make it. And if Aaron manages to get that Czar out, this is just not going to be an issue in all honesty. We do see the... Land production has been heavily focused around making these demolishers. The demolishers are probably about to start going down. They have gotten a nice amount of headway over here onto the firebase of Staw SM. Both both teams losing firebases at this point. Aaron going to be moving the comm down, trying to stun up these units. Remember, he does have Chrono Field Dampener or Chrono Dampener Field on the comm. Is building up some more point defense to try and deal with this. All of the demolishers die. Four demolishers leaving 7,000 reclaim, but that's nothing in comparison to the 36,000 that was left on the doorstep of Chip. And Chip is not reclaiming it? Chip! What, what are you doing? What are you doing, Chip? Reclaim this. Chip, if you... you you're, reclaim. Come on. Reclaim it and do some massive spending. Make a Yathoda. It would have been GG to land on my commander. Mm, you're typing instead of reclaiming the goddamn czar, Chip. Damn it, Chip. Damn you all to hell. Um, I'm just kidding. I'm happy all of these people participated, and I'm just making some jokes. Um, the army of Chip, with all of these Elshavas, getting a good amount of head headway towards the bases of Yadel and Aaron, the Hot Chocolatier is losing a ton, a ton of map control. 
and it is just not looking really good for the Hot Chocolatiers whatsoever. We do see a lot of scouts now coming out from Chip towards the base of Yadel. Not really much to see here, just a relatively well ecoed up base and a bunch of engineers producing Percivals who get stuck with pathing because there's too many engineers around. Uh, that is unfortunate. A demolisher also stuck. Need to uh, think about this whenever you're designing your base and whenever you decide to have engineers assist in a, f a facility. You want to get... It'd be more efficient to get up multiple T3 factories and change which engineers are helping what. The air factory control cade out for Yadel. Meanwhile, Aaron working on the second czar. It's not going to be finished very soon, but we have a nuke being rushed out by Aaron. Going to be getting up very quickly. It's been built very quickly, and now it's at... 30 almost 40 percent do we have an anti-nuke queued up yet do we where is the anti-nuke we need it built building yesterday it needs to be building right now uh chip 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 where's your anti-nuke where's your anti-nuke god damn it why do all the seraphim structures look the same there is not an anti-nuke at all um as far as i can tell star sm do you have an anti-nuke just yet no you do not um where where uh, where's the engineers that need to be these engineers need to start building an anti-nuke right now the nuke now getting close to 50 percent complete aaron needs to make sure his economy is well balanced for this and it is has plenty of mass to throw into this a lot of build power on it almost 50 percent complete on that nuke we do have a lot of t3 engineers now coming out but do we have an anti-nuke building i don't see it anywhere Mass fabricators are not what you want right now. You want that anti-nuke building as fast as possible. Where is it? Oh, we don't see it. We don't see an anti-nuke out of either of our players, and both of them are at Tech 3. There's really no big excuse for not building an anti-nuke. Finally reclaiming that, Chip can reclaim that and build an anti-nuke very quickly. Aaron sending mass over to Yadel, who I'm sure is in a horrible mass stall. No, isn't in a horrible mass stall, just negative 30. But isn't spending mass as he throws everything into this, this Apocalypse T3 strategic missile launcher. And it's currently getting close to about 70%. Why? Why are you building a second one? Oh, please, please don't build it. Oh, no, 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 no. Just, just focus. Just focus you can't you can't afford a second one power wise you're already living off of the overflow from yadel as far as reclaim is concerned and or as oh whoa he's overflowing seven thousand never mind you don't need to worry about power yep yep okay you can build the second one but you want to get this first one launched as soon as possible i'm not seeing the anti-nuke i don't know if these players are seeing it where i am not but this is going to be very important if it if it works out we have a ton of Sathanuses, Sathon, Sathanuses, Dr. Seuss's over here throwing some shots into the main, the firebase of Aaron. Aaron having a, de a large amount of shields, honestly, and is going to be able to hold out for a while against this, but doesn't really have a great counter. So all of these T3 mobile artillery are going to start producing issues for the hot chocolatiers, but the Hawk Chocolatiers having a more of a plan for ending the game than the Faf Noobs. The Faf Noobs haven't even started an anti-nuke as far as I can tell. I don't see an anti-nuke anywhere. And they have indeed scouted the nuke. They've scouted the nuke. They know it's there. Where is your anti-nuke? Where is it? Surprisingly little freaking out. I usually freak out when I scout a nuke. Uh, gonna be possibly going for the snipe on it, but that might just be too late as the nuke can launch immediately. Launch the nuke! L launch it! Please! Is there an anti-nuke I'm not seeing? Come on. Come on. I'm not crazy, am I? Oh god, the comments are yelling at me right now. There's an anti-nuke! It's right in front of your face, you dumb shit! Why aren't you launching the nuke? Do you- have you not scouted? You haven't scouted. You don't, you don't know that there's no anti-nuke, do you? I swear to God, there's not an anti-nuke, is there? Let's see, we're at T3 structures. No anti-nuke there. Yeah, there, there's not an anti-nuke out from chip. Strategic launch detected. It's going straight for... That's probably not the best spot. Is going to be able to kill off the... It'll kill off the T3 air. It'll kill off... The reclaim, which there's very little left of, it might kill off Chip if Chip keeps moving in the direction he's going. Uh, Chip, 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 
Uh, does Chip die to this? If Chip dies to this... Chip? Chip, don't do this to me, man. Chip dies to the nuke. He runs in the one. If he had stayed still, he would have lived. Chip dies to the nuke, and that is the end of Chip and the end of T3 Air. It's all left on to Star SM, and we have double nukes now. Uh, questionable how effective double nukes will be. Aaron living off of his power, the power overflow from his ally still, and. I don't know, where is the second czar? Did the second czar just get reclaimed? Did he give up on the second czar? I think he gave up on the second czar. Because there's not a wreck of a czar. And, uh, yeah, that's bad. We have an anti-nuke built over here. It's currently getting heavily assisted, so it's going to be finishing up relatively soon. So, Stawism still has a decent shot in this game. Most of the economy was left perfectly fine for the Faf noobs. So, Stawism is probably getting a lot of advice from his ally Chip, and will be able to hold out for a nice while against this, and possibly come up with a winning strategy here soon. I'd like to see an experimental or something try and throw... S oh, wait, we do have an experimental. We have an Aswasha on the way, which is a good idea since your opponents, despite having T3 air, have decided not to build much T3 air. Um, <laughs> to be completely honest, this T3 air factory has probably made more engineers than ASF scouts and restorers combined. I thought I noticed the nuke when you made it, but I didn't see it until it was almost loaded. Got my calm the direction I was going. Oh, wow. I don't know what we're yelling about. <laughs> yeah, either way, Yadel has built a fat boy. Is that a fat boy? Yadel? Where'd you build an experimental? Oh, Yadel was given the GC from Aaron. Okay, that makes sense. And whoa, that's a that's a that's a good amount of Percivals. 36 Percivals, some Para Shields, and a GC is a very deadly army. We do have Yathotas and Swashes on the way. Is Staw SM able to afford all this? Staw SM cannot spend his mass fast enough, which is a legitimate problem. Needs more build power out on the field to produce these experimentals and such, but... At the same time, Yadel and Aaron producing quite a little bit of eco themselves, and both of them able to balance their eco just fine right now, spending most of their mass. Let's, uh, let's go ahead. Whoa, that is a lot. Oh my god, I love this. I love this. This is beautiful. People say that the perfect army doesn't exist. But then they see this and they go, the perfect army doesn't, oh. Oh my god, look at him. All the doggos are going to start walking. Oh, walking doggos, walking doggos, walking doggos, walking doggos. Now it's time to take a nap. Oh, it's beautiful. God, I love it. <laughs> All right, enough of looking at that, as the southern flank is going to be experiencing a much more difficult situation. We have some T2 artillery now coming out for Aaron, but I don't think it's going to work against this much. Against, uh, a, against, one does not simply kill the Suthanuses. Um, even though you could kill them quite easily by just walking your comm at them at this point. I think you could walk Aaron's comm at them and kill them off. Meanwhile, the GC and the Kala and the Percivals, the strongest land experimental other than the Megalith, and the Percivals walking directly at each other, or directly with each other towards the enemy. I always die to nukes, but I never learned to make nuke defense. You had no excuse this time. Chip, if you're watching this, nah. N nah, fam. You had no excuse. You scouted this with plenty of time. You had a ton of T3 engineers sitting over here, and you decided to build mass fabricators instead of an anti-nuke. You scouted the nuke in time to build anti-nuke in time. If you had thrown your economy at it. Nah, nah, fam. No, no, no saying, uh, no saying that you, d you, like, that's just, that's just a case of bad brain, to be honest. That's bad brain. Because when you, when you're doing that kind of shit, when you're doing that kind of shit, that's like, 
you you got you got information it went to your eyes it hit your retinas it processed into your brain and you just didn't respond to that like your scouting all of that diligent scouting was for nothing <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's okay i'm way worse player than chip so like I I can I can criticize them as long as I say I'm also shit and would have died there too, right? Cuz I probably wouldn't have scouted. That's how I that's how I that's the big brain play that I make. If I don't scout and I miss something, at least I don't have the excuse of scouting it and doing the wrong reaction, right? Uh the oh my gosh, the Asswash are gonna get in here, gonna be dealing a lot of damage to the comm of Aaron. Oh, this is bad for Aaron the but the GC is starting to make its way towards the comm of the the comm of Star SM. Oh my god, Aaron's going to die. Aaron dies right now. Aaron is dead. We have to see if somehow the comm of Yadel can survive this. Yadel having shield on that comm gonna take three to four passes to kill off, but the Oh no, the the S washer dies, and the GC is about to be in range of Star SM. Oh my word! I think that's it. I think that's it. The hot chocolatiers are gonna take their victory. They're gonna move on to round two to compete to be a finalist in the Darkest Heart Tourney. Thank you all for watching. You've been beautiful. Thank you to my patrons, Timothy Calderwood, Sergeant Syphilis, and Nogthor. Thank you all for joining me. I love you. Like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more. Dislike if you didn't like it. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.